In this video, I would like to talk to you about the action potential. And when we're talking about action potentials, the first thing we have to talk about is the ions that are surrounding the cell. So if you have a cell, on the outside of that cell, there's a lot of sodium. I like to think of this as na 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 Batman. And inside the cell, there's less sodium. But, and so what happens is that normally the cell would appear to be negative relative the inside of the cell would seem negative relative to the outside because it has fewer positive charges. But when sodium channels open, they allow the sodium to move into the cell. And when that sodium is allowed to move into the cell, the cell gets more positive. And this is something that is called a depolarization. Well, once the cell reaches its peak depolarization, these sodium channels inactivate, and that basically means that they close, they stop letting more sodium in. At the same time, something else happens, and that's that that, to think about that, we have to think about potassium. So potassium is very high inside the cell, and it's low outside the cell. And what this means is that the potassium wants to go from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. It cannot do that until its channels open. Once its channels open, which happens right about here, Now positive ions start leaving the neuron and that makes it become more negative because now again it has fewer positives inside than negatives. Of course what has happened over this time is that we've ended up with potassiums on the outside because they've been able to move out and they don't belong there and sodiums on the inside because they've moved in and they don't belong there either. So we need a special player to help us out. And that player is the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump moves... Oh, let's try this again so you can see it. The sodium-potassium pump moves three sodium outside for every two potassium it moves inside, and that comes at the cost of ATP. In doing this, what happens is that sodium-potassium pump, and by the way, sometimes scientists, neuroscientists like myself will call them NACs, because sodium is Na and potassium is K, those sodium-potassium pumps become active and they restore the cell back to balance. And that's what happens during the action potential. So what we really want to know then is what allows sodium to enter the cell in the first place. If we look at 
a cell membrane. That membrane is often referred to as semi-permeable. And that's because the phospholipid has a polar head. This means that it's charged, but it's not like a big charge like an ion, it's just a little, a slight charge, and a nonpolar tail. Well, it turns out charged things like charged things and non-charged things don't. So when the ions, which are charged, come up to this membrane, they do just fine with all these polar heads, but the tails don't like Polar heads are totally fine, it's supposed to be a smiley face, and the tails are saying, no way. So the way that these ions have to get through the cell membrane is through ion channels. And these are proteins that are in the membrane. They're basically like little doggy doors for the, for the ions. So when we're asking this question of what allows sodium to move in the first place, one of the things we need to think about is what causes the channel to open. And this leads me to something, a concept called a positive feedback loop. Sodium channels are opened by positive charges. So positively charged um, inside of the cell. And once they're open, they allow positive in, which makes the inside of the cell more positive. And this is why we call this a positive feedback loop, because it keeps going around and around and around and building on itself. And this positive feedback loop is this part of the action potential right here. That's why that, that is so sharp. This only happens if you reach a magical value called threshold. And that's because below this value, this loop doesn't happen. So the goal of the sensory system is to help the cell reach this threshold. And what that means is it wants to get the cell depolarized enough to reach threshold. And what you will find is that sensory neurons or sensory what you'll find is that sensory receptors allow threshold to be reached. Now there is an exception to this, which is vision, and I will talk about why that exception exists. But in general, they allow threshold to be reached, and that allows that action potential to happen, which is the neural signal. So where is this happening on your cell? If we look at your neuron, I always think it looks kind of like a person with a bed head. These are the dendrites. And the voltage sensitive channels are here. This is the axon, or this whole big thing here is called the axon. 
and the axon is home of those sodium channels that open with voltage. On the dendrite, the channels that are here open due to chemicals or like chemicals like a neurotransmitter or a sensory stimulus. When they do that, they allow positive ions in. And if enough positive gets to ions get to this area, it'll start an action potential. And that action potential will travel down the cell, and eventually the cell will release its neurotransmitter, exciting the next cell in line. So I hope that that at least helps to clarify some of the information that we've talked about already with action potentials and sensory systems. In the rest of the sensory lectures, we will be talking about how those channels become opened. And it's a little bit different for each sense.